All right, everybody, welcome back to the Black Cat Crypto Club. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, another day, guys. It's kind of started out just like I was saying uh, yesterday. We have been for the last several days. We open up on Wall Street's uh, opening bell for the first two hours or so. We've we've dipped, and since we've kind of recovered back up. Uh, right now we're trading at about ninety nine thousand one hundred dollars. Uh, yesterday, um, we did set an all time high, uh, just six hundred dollars away from that six figure Bitcoin. Um, so you know, I said yesterday that I wouldn't be surprised if we went higher yesterday than when I when uh, we set that early day all-time high and we did actually get above that later in the day but um you know things have kind of come into play and i think that hundred thousand dollar mark is you know we six hundred dollars away from the hundred thousand dollars and kind of rejecting back down off that guys slightly not not a hard rejection but uh, a, a little bit, guys. We did go down um, to what? Uh, 90, 97,200 this morning. Uh, so it did reject that back down a little bit, but, um, you know, being that close to that $100,000 mark, it, it's not really a big surprise in my mind. I think we'll kind of test that a few times. Uh, before we we break through it uh, definitively um but yeah let's get into it uh i did have a question on uh the video yesterday that i do want to cover really quick it's not a big long one um or at least i hope so i sometimes i get going on these things and i get a little bit long-winded but i'll try and keep it a, a kind of short um, Jimmy Timber 7074 again uh, asked, do you believe Bitcoin could really be around uh, the next hundred years or longer, like some people say? It's a tough question to to really kind of pin, pinpoint down. Um, I know Michael Saylor is kind of a big proponent of, of Bitcoin and its staying power that long. Um, but guys, the, the reason I would say I'm, you know, it's hard to say is because, look, we've just kind of embarked into this new artificial intelligence age that we're going into and things are changing so fast now um, that I think anybody, nobody can really say uh, what, what the future is going to look like even 15 years from now. Um, I will say this, however, guys, and I've, I've said a few times on the channel that I don't ever plan on selling my Bitcoin. Now, if you just take that as, as a, a, a statement, um, you know, probably came off a little bit wrong because that as a statement kind of uh, almost comes off as like, a religious statement like I will follow Bitcoin to the end of the world uh, you know nothing will ever shake me and that's that's not really how I planned on uh, coming out with that statement I, I I just I never plan to sell my Bitcoin now if something fundamentally changes about Bitcoin uh, if if something changes about the network and the miners all get together and decide on a different code um, that's something to consider, you know, that might be something that would, would spur me to consider selling Bitcoin. Uh, another would be if, if a new technology came out and was magnitudes better than Bitcoin, like what Bitcoin is to gold, uh, if, if a new technology came out and was that to Bitcoin, uh, obviously, that would be something you would have to really consider um, 
whether you were going to lessen your allocation to Bitcoin or sell altogether, or if you didn't think that that new thing was really going to be a thing, you know? Uh, so there are, you know, situations that you're going to kind of have to constantly weigh when you're thinking about that, or at least I am where I'm, where I'm, I'm not planning on selling Bitcoin. I, I will continue to kind of reassess that. Um, but if things stay the same, I don't ever plan on selling Bitcoin. Um, so with that said, guys, going back to 2016, um, I only held Bitcoin back then. I, you know, I loved Bitcoin. It was, it was the thing, it, you know, was amazing. I thought it was, you know, the future, but honestly, back then we started seeing a uh, new, a bunch of new coins coming out. And, you know, back then I didn't really know about Ethereum. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know that there was like a fundamental difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. And so in my mind, it was it was like a lot of maxis now think that Ethereum is a threat to Bitcoin, which I don't really believe that it is. It's a completely different kind of thing. But back then I didn't know that. And so I thought it was, you know, kind of a competitor. And although I, I really liked Bitcoin and I thought it was probably the best it did sp all the, all these new coins coming in into the market did spark that thought in my head of whether bitcoin would actually be the the end all the one and only end all you know coin and so what i what i'm getting at is i have more conviction today that bitcoin will continue to be the number one you know, the king in the crypto space than I did in 2016. And the reason I say that, guys, is Bitcoin is the, it's the strongest, the most secure, uh, most decentralized, and the most powerful network that we've ever seen as humans. Um, it It's, it's massive, and I don't see anything of the same technology, we'll say, taking that pole position at this point. Um, no matter if it's faster, uh, you know, faster, um, I just don't see anybody taking that pole position, especially as far as power of network and security. It, I don't see it. Now, it, like I said, if another technology came along that was a completely different paradigm um, than what we're seeing now, then that's a possibility. Um, so anyways, long story short, guys, uh, you know, it's hard to, to really tell what the future is going to look like because things are, are so rapidly advancing. Uh, you know, the same could be said in the early 2000s before or you know even the the mid to late 2000s when the iPhone came out you know nobody knew how disruptive that the smartphone would be uh to our society to uh you know nobody knew the social social implications you know that we're seeing now uh, nobody knew the political implications that that cell phones would bring, smartphones would bring, um, all these things. You know, almost every every part of our lives now has been touched by cell phone, uh, smartphones, and nobody could have guessed what what would happen uh, from there. And I think that's kind of the same thing with with AI, honestly, and and blockchain. Um, nobody knows how the future is going to look, you know, going back to, uh, was it my, it was two videos ago, I believe that I did that, that video on blockchain and what it can do and what we don't even know it's going to do. Um, we don't know what our world's going to look like in, in 15 years even. So, uh, hard to pinpoint that question, but hopefully that gives you something to think about. Thank you for the, the question. It's always fun to, to kind of 
get something like that and do do a little bit on it. So thank you, Jimmy Timber uh, 7074. Again, if you guys want uh, to ask some questions in the comments, leave me a comment, leave me a question, and I am more than happy to cover that on the on the channel. So uh, hit me up. OK, so we're going to get into some news, uh, some news that I was going to. I meant to bring you guys yesterday and it slipped my mind. Uh, some new news today and uh, maybe just look a little bit into what's going on in the market and check out the charts a little bit. So let's get into it. Uh, before we do, guys, again, this is Rory Pond Rescue Ranch. Uh, this is the animal sanctuary that I'm, I'm really trying to help out and raise money for this month. If you guys have anything to give, please consider going over and helping these animals out, helping, helping them um, provide for these animals and take care of them. Uh, you can donate directly to them. I have the links in the description. Uh, it'll take you to their homepage. There's another one that takes you directly to this shop for uh, shop to support our animals uh, page that's on their their uh, website. And as you can see, guys, they um, they've got an Amazon wish list, some merch you can buy to help help support their animals. Uh, or you can just donate via PayPal or Venmo here. So, guys, very much appreciated if you guys even just donate a little bit. Uh, you know, all of the sanctuaries that I bring to you each month are are really fairly small sanctuaries that any amount of money really helps them out, guys. So, uh, always appreciated on my part. Um, if you guys, if you guys have anything to give, it also helps you out tax wise. So consider that. All right, let's get over to this first bit of news, guys. And this is yesterday. Uh, Gary Gensler made a an, an announcement that he will be leaving the SEC January twentieth of twenty twenty five. Uh, so if you've been paying attention in crypto at all over the last few years, you'll be jumping out of your seat, jumping up and down with excitement because Gary has been nothing uh, short of an, a complete nightmare for this in industry. Um, the funny thing is, guys, is, you know, people were discussing whether he would leave early or not. And I, I was shaking my head going... You guys don't even you act like you don't even know who Gary Gensler is and what he's you know he's just been completely relentless he's he's lost in court over and over um the SEC has lost on on lawsuits over and over the past few years and he just keeps going at it so for him to quit early I was I was like not likely he'll he'll be drugged kicking and screaming. Uh, but you know, once, once Don, Donald Trump said, uh, he'd, he'd fire him day one, uh, you know, what's better quitting your job or being fired. So in a way, Gary Gensler's dragging his feet to the last day, day one of Donald Trump will be January 20th. And that's the day old Gary Gonsler is going to be Gonsler. So anyways, guys, uh, that is good news. And just it's it's interesting because on that news yesterday. All of the coins and and projects that Gary Gensler has has called a security or taken uh, served a Wells notice um, to sue them really took off yesterday, um, namely, obviously, the one I look at is Solana. And on the announcement of him quitting, Solana shot up to 263 yesterday, which is an all-time high. Uh, so Solana has not had uh, a, a new all-time high since 2021. And yesterday, we just surpassed that, guys. Um, so, you know, huge, huge um, doorknob. Solana is the huge 
proverbial doorknob hitting him on the way out. Um, but there are some also some other things with Solana I want to get into. We're going to jump over to this article. It says, you know, this just happened yesterday. Solana ETF regulatory fl filings flood in as Gensler set departure date. So Bitwise, VanEck, uh, 21 shares. I think VanEck already had a filing in. Um, Canary Capital, Capital have submitted S1 registration statements to list spot Solana ETFs in the U.S. Just on the news that Gary's going to be hitting the road. Uh, <laughs> so good news there, guys. Um, good news for the entire crypto market, honestly, the, the entire crypto industry. There isn't, you know, Gary Gensler was seen as a good guy coming in, um, but he, he got into SEC chair and Elizabeth Warren put her hand right up his back end and has used him as her puppet for the last four years. And, you know, Gary's probably happy to have her hand out of his butt, honestly. <laughs> um, but, you know, he was very pro-Bitcoin, very pro-blockchain, um, said really good things about Ethereum before he became chair. He was, a, he was an MIT professor on blockchain technology, and he was all about it. And then he gets in, FTX happens, he had mud on his face, he had Elizabeth Warren behind him saying, anti-crypto army this and anti-crypto army that. Uh, and and he just had, he, he flipped under under political pressure. But um, the, the thing is, is he could have done a lot for cryptocurrency, even if he didn't come out completely pro-cryptocurrency. If he would have just came out and done his job in trying to protect investors guys there he's not wrong when he says that the crypto market is rife with fraudsters there is a lot of fraud that happens in cryptocurrency um but he didn't go after the fraud not not one time did he go after somebody that was actually fraudulent he could have and that would have been positive, but he didn't. He let the fraudsters have full reign and he went after legitimate companies. And basically, you know, it wouldn't have even been a bad thing if, if he said that, you know, this coin or this coin and this coin are securities come in and file with us. But that's not what he did. He said, these are securities you'll never get a security clearance, <laughs> pun intended, uh, for those things. You know, there's no way to come in and file with us. So good luck. We're just going to sue you. And, you know, so basically what he did was he, he, he sued all of the legitimate companies and people and coins and projects, and he let the real fraudsters just do whatever they want. And so he's, he's made the crypto space worse off for sure. He's, he's done a complete uh, disservice to the, to the public and to investors. Um, so it's just amazing to see him leaving, honestly. Even if we get somebody in that is just fair, right? Uh, not even pro crypto, but just fair. <laughs> and if we get somebody pro crypto, all bets are off. Um, okay, so the next bit is uh, the part I I meant to bring this to you guys yesterday uh, because this happened two days ago. But BlackRock's Bitcoin options spark 1.9 billion dollar frenzy as institutions bet big. So these launched on iBit. Uh, two days ago, did two, uh, nearly two billion dollars in volume, uh, and you know we have the experts James Safert and uh, 
Ah, oh, why can't um, Eric Balchunas uh, from Bloomberg, the ETF analyst, saying that they've never seen anything like this. Uh, they're massive successes, which just brings more robustness to Bitcoin's market. Uh, we'll see a lot. I imagine we will see a lot more institutions coming in um, because now they have that hedge if they choose to kind of use that now. So a lot of companies won't get into anything that they can't kind of safely hedge against as well. So uh, this kind of provides all kind of different options, right? Uh, for for the market and it it brings in more market makers. So this will make uh, Bitcoin even stronger. Um, so it did just launch on iBit two days ago, but I believe either yesterday or today it was, uh, they had more options launching on, um, I don't know, I think Fidelity and, and um, Vanek, maybe Bitwise. Uh, so several new options have been launching the last, the last few days. Super good news. Um, one other thing, guys, kind of off topic here. I meant to kind of uh share this with you guys when we were talking about fraudsters and gary gensler but guys i i have had a few um comments on my past several videos that have obviously been like fraudulent and uh you know scammers and i as soon as i see them i delete them because i don't want any of my audience kind of falling to to that kind of stuff. But guys, if you do see a comment on any page, um, these guys that were commenting uh, were, were playing really stupid and saying that they had a bunch of money in this wallet and then they shared the seed, seed phrase, guys. They shared their seed phrase in this comment and then they said, could you help me out with how to move it? And Listen, you should never, ever, 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 ever share your seed phrase with anyone, anyone, uh, because as soon as somebody has that, they have your money. Um, so don't ever share your seed phrase. But the, the way these scams work, I imagine, I don't know for sure, but I imagine how these scams work is They've posted their seed phrase. So at some point they say, you know, maybe they're going to send you some money. All they need is your seed phrase and boom, you're gone. Um, so if you guys ever see that, don't, don't even engage with those guys. I will delete those comments as soon as I see them. Um, and even if they weren't broadsters, I would delete that as quick as possible just to protect that person. Um, but I, I guarantee, you know, there was like three or four different comments from different people that were essentially the same, uh, signaling that those are scams. So guys, just be aware as we go higher in Bitcoin, as, as more and more money comes into this space and more and more excitement comes into cryptocurrency, the more you're going to see these scams emerging. So be extra extra vigilant if you guys need to i did a, a complete video on scams really pretty early into this channel probably right around seven or eight videos in i did a complete video on scams but guys it's going to be an ever-evolving thing uh that you're just going to have to to be very skeptical with your your wallets and your coins and just be very very careful especially during these uptrends uh it, it will bring them out of the woodwork so um anyways guys i will try and keep the comments um safe here uh but just to let you guys know um okay so going getting into the next stuff guys um i did say that we ran up to a hundred really close to a hundred thousand yesterday um was that right here i believe 
uh yeah i or actually right here we hit 90 99,688 i believe was was our high right here but guys after after we've come down off that you can see we've built a pretty decent wall of shorts up here uh so signals a lot of people think that we can't get through a hundred thousand dollars which i think is uh risky i mean shorting bitcoin is is ridiculous and you know unethical whatever uh but you know even even going long on leverage is essentially the same thing uh maybe not unethical to do that but it's equally as risky and in my opinion kind of stupid as you can see right down here we have a lot of longs that could be um liquidated if if we drop down to that 90 97 thousand dollar mark which we just we almost liquidated all of those and here's the thing guys is this is public information so when you go long or you short a position ai bots and whales can see that information if if volume drops to the point where they think that they can sway the market one way or the other that's free money for them guys that is just money that they can reach out and grab whether they they swing the market up to to liquidate shorts or if they sell and and liquidate longs like that is just money that is just waiting to be taken um so guys i i never play with leverage um if you do just just be very careful and be very conservative you know on on some of these platforms you can take one to a hundred uh like hundred times bitcoin positions so what that means is you put a hundred dollars down if you go a hundred a hundred times um if if Bitcoin goes up 1%, you've gained 100%. So it's attractive. I get where the allure is. Um, but, um, you know, if, if, if it goes up 2%, you've gained 200%. So I totally understand the allure. But guys, Bitcoin moves and it moves quick. Um, and 1% is not a lot. So the upside is you gain 100% for every percent you go up. The downside is if you just, if we go down just 1% and Bitcoin will do 1% in 10 minutes. Um, if you go down 1%, you've lost it all. It's completely gone. It's not like, oh, I can wait this out until it goes back up. No, your money is gone. Those whales have manipulated and just taken that right off the market for you. Um, so <laughs> again, guys, I, th I think it's a fool's game. And, and here's the thing, guys, is during these uh, parabolic moves, I've said time and time again in the past, during going just parabolic, we have 30% corrections in the past. And what those corrections are, first and foremost, that is longs being liquidated, leveraged players being liquidated and losing all of their money. Um, and then second of all, you know, after after everybody's liquidated, um, we get the the fear, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt stages, and lettuce hands and paper hands, weak hands people that don't have conviction in what they're holding will sell because the news is bad. It's going down like crazy. People will sell. And that just furthers that. So once all of the leverage is cleared and all of the paper hands have just sold their Bitcoin to the whales, that's when we'll continue to skyrocket. Um, so again, guys, playing leverage, it just doesn't, 
if it, you know, Raul Pal uh, is very vocal against this as well, and you know, just says, you know, basically, if an asset gains 150 percent in a year, like Bitcoin has done this last year alone, and we're not even in the parabolic move. If an asset does that 150% in a year, and that's not enough for you, that you have to be greedy and try and get a leveraged amount of, of gains. I mean, that's, that's insane greed, guys. Um, and it eventually, all of those will be wiped out. Especially if you're, if you're not a whale and you're just a regular retail trader. That's not something you really want to mess around with. So anyways, guys, we've got getting back to this uh, liquidation chart. We've got shorts above and uh, longs below. It's anybody's guess as to where this goes, uh, whether we, you know, blow through this hundred per hundred thousand dollars and liquidate these longs. Or, or you know anything could happen we could we could dip really quick back down to that 97 that we were just at this morning dip just a little bit below that and then once these longs are liquidated skyrocket past a hundred thousand nobody knows so uh something to watch we're we're kind of in this sandwich of of leverage right now um okay let's go over to the charts really quick uh, just kind of look, um, looks like we are actually, did we just put in a new all time high? Um, 99,657 right here. We hit 99,500. I swear last night I was looking and we hit. 99.688 or something. Okay, well, regardless, uh, we may have just put in a new all time high. According to this chart, we did. Um, so we're on our way again today, guys. Uh, things are getting exciting. 99,600. Uh, Solana's actually down today a bit um we're about ten dollars off that all-time high that we set yesterday ethereum is down just a bit in the last day um yeah and the dxy is continuing its its way up guys this this is kind of crazy Anyways, guys, uh, exciting times ahead. Um, again, if you guys have questions that you want me to address on the next episode, let me know. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for, for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. And I really like helping you guys out. Um, hopefully you guys find some value in, in these videos. If you did, hit the like button and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.